All right, you're welcome back to Transition 2019, where we provide context and perspective on the most important socio, political, and economic issues affecting the Nigerian nation. I am Christian Nogodo. Thanks for staying with us. And I still have here with me uh, Gabriel Suswan. Uh, don't forget, he's a lawyer too, apart from uh, being uh, a two-time governor of Benue State, a former member of the House of Representatives, and uh, you were even the chairman of uh, Committee on FCT right. and the uh, Appropriation. Yeah, well, fantastic positions you've uh, held there. And today you've been elected as a senator to uh, represent the people of Benue State. Okay, before we look at the politics of the National Assembly, which every day keeps heating up, would you, how would you respond to your party, the People's Democratic Party, advising Mr. President, you know, to rejig the security architecture uh, in order to combat and contain the armed banditry, terrorism, you know, uh, the various uh, headers, farmers, uh, clashes, you know, tearing this country? Yeah, I think I would agree with them because if we are doing something in particular we are getting the same result uh, which is not palatable to you I think you should try another way so uh, rejigging the security architecture of this country I think the president who is who will be looking at that as he take uh, his second tenure in office uh, these security chiefs uh, have been there uh, the result has been the same and so there's a need to try some other hands and see what happens and so I think the president is not uh, uh, unaware, unaware of, 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 of the need mm. uh, to do that because this has become too perennial for us to ignore it. Mm. Uh, killings have resurged. Uh, I was uh, discussing with the uh, governor of Borono and uh, he told me that uh, the Boko Haram scourge had substantially gone down, but there's a resurgence that is coming. Yeah. And, and the village uh, in Konduga yes, has been and, cleared um, of uh, the people and, now because and, they are accused of harboring he, uh, Boko he, Haram. He was, uh, he was worried. Elements. He yeah. was worried. Mm. Uh, but every time you know you hear that Sambisa has been cleared, uh, these people have been defeated, and then uh, you know the chief executive of the place is saying that there is a resurgence which is more, even more serious than what we witnessed in the past. Mm. That, I think the president uh, is worried because he swore to protect lives and properties. Yeah. And the buck stopped on his table. Absolutely. Uh, and so I think that he will do something about it. So I think I join other Nigerians. It's not just PDP. There are a lot of Nigerians who are of the opinion that there's a need for the president to look at the security architecture of this country and take more serious look at it and see what he can do. Before, before I go uh, to discuss the issue of uh, the National Assembly leadership, you know, I want you, I just want our viewers who have not seen uh, our parent uh, company's uh, headline today, where the federal government, you know, is said to have spent 731 billion naira to subsidize Inflated, inflated petrol imports. That's the World Bank saying that. The phenomenon of subsidized petroleum products seems to be the easiest way to, you know, siphon uh, the country's uh, money. It, it, it was perpetrated when uh, your party, too, was uh, holding 40. Uh, at the national level, and uh, it's like this is now being uh, the ante is being raised with this kind of damning report coming from the World Bank. You know, the politics of subsidy is such that or it's, of it's, oil, uh, or, or, you know, subsidy here, no oil. You know, uh, it's a lot of politics involved in it, and uh, subsidy, yes, because quite frankly, if the government uh, does not subsidize uh, petroleum product. Uh, given uh, the income of Nigerians, uh, it would be very difficult for us to operate. And people take advantage of that to perpetrate this kind of fraud. If we are from the outside, when this government was from the outside, uh, there was a lot of noise as to how money was being uh, siphoned through subsidy. 
uh, this is a report from the World Bank. Uh, it's not from PDP, it's not from other Nigeria, it's from the World Bank. And so it is something that I would expect that uh, the president as he moves into his second tenor and uh, uh, intend to leave a solid legacy uh, should look at it. Uh, there are people there who are entrenched in, in it. In this subsidy. Uh, yeah, they are entrenched in it. They must be identified and taken out. Otherwise, you know, it will be difficult for, for, for anyone to do anything about it. It's a very sophisticated uh, racket. racket. It's highly sophisticated. It's not something that you sit even as president. It will be difficult for you to understand how it's operate, except you decide to do a comprehensive surgical oppression in that place. And a lot of people have had issue with NMPC, you know, because you have entrenched people that even when some of the MDs are out, they're entrenched in it. So it's, it's, it's a cycle. But, and so I think uh, with this report, uh, it will attract the attention of the president to sit down and do a surgical operation in the place. And another worrisome situation is that even with the rising price of crude oil on yeah. the international mm -hmm. spot market, production and uh, activities in Nigeria's oil and gas industry are declining. Yeah, you see, there are the, the local issues in the production areas. You know, production, if, if, if the security challenges, which we have, you know, uh, some of the rigs, uh, some of the pipes uh, that, that are being blown up are not working, uh, people can't operate there freely. There's no way you can enhance production. Uh, I, I know that, you know, the quarter allocations, I think 2.3 uh, million barrel per day, for Nigeria. I don't think we are producing that much. And so it, 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 it affects everybody because uh, the benchmarking of the budget has direct link to the economy of the country. And so if you benchmark uh, the budget at uh, X amount, and then the production, and base it on the production of 2.3, and you're and having 1.8, you know the effects. Ab initial, sure, yeah. initial, sure whatever budget you put forward mm. has a deficit that will not be able to to uh, match to, to your match revenue that you're positively going to get on, on the country. So, you see, this is very serious, and I think that the president will take it uh, at a very serious level too. I, I I have no doubt that he will do that because it's his legacy. His second tenor is on his way out. What he's leaving behind is a legacy. He can't allow some uh, individuals uh, to be so feeding continue fat, to, Yeah, to milk fat Nigeria and, really and dry. Why, why you go down, if you go to Benue, there are people who can't even feed in a whole day. Then you have individuals feeding fat on the resources of the country. I think the president... Well, that's a huge uh, problem and a huge challenge if people uh, in the lands that... Benue State, uh, the acronym is Food Basket of the Nation. What and I'm you saying, that, no, you, no, you, it's not just farming. You see, no, you can produce uh, no, the be, yams. No, beyond farming, yeah. uh, we've talked here before. Why are there no cottage industries? Cottage, small, that will employ it answers, it answers itself. Where's electricity? You know factors of production. You know the principal one. It's power. If you don't have power, you can't have a cottage industry. Who, how can you afford to buy diesel? What will be the source of power? Because industry operates with power. It's not just in Benue. So we're not, we're not really, so, so, we're, so, we're not really so, planning for development so, in this country so, then. So, I'm just so looking, power, sorry, power. Your Excel, okay. sorry, Your Excellency, because I'm just looking at Senate's approval of the MTEF, UNFSP, <laughs> you, you understand? MTEF, uh -huh. MTEF, MTEF is, uh, is, a, is a, you saw as far as this country is concerned, it's a mirage medium-term expenditure framework, yeah. it's a mirage. Because, it's not because it can't work. It has never worked. See, it can't work because our economy is so unstable. MTEF cannot work in this country. It can never work. It's a joke. But with a you know, medium, with, with, with a uh, five-year, ten-year development plan work? No, you see, you need to have a stable economy. If you don't have a stable economy, you can't plan. You know, when this administration came into power, they were talking about zero budgeting, and I laugh. You can't do zero budgeting in this country because the economy is highly unstable. 
you know, you know, when you put this uh, MTF thing on the table, how do you plan when, you, you know, if... Is a monolithic economy will when, run. When now you know that is okay, oil production uh, is, uh, is the quarter allocated to us 2.3. Yeah. This year maybe it's only 1.5. Next year it might even be less. How do you plan? How do you, how do you address the issue of MTM in such a... You know, these approvals have become a ritual. But medium-term expenditure framework in this country, the way our economy is structured can never work. So it's, so, worse, so, of, it's so, worse of time. So nobody is really feeling the impact of all this. No, it's but, worse, it's so worse then, of time. It's so then even time. if we talk of diversification of the economy away from the monolithic, you know, culture of oil, oil, oil economy. And, and gas... Yeah then there is a huge deficit again like you're trying to talk about yes. infrastructural you know uh, apparatus like electricity and the rest why aren't see, we over, getting it right over the years uh, government in and out have tried to address the issue of electricity holistically uh, yeah holistically but it has not worked because we need just like i talked about the issue of subsidy in nmpc we need a surgical oppression in that sector you know, Obasanjo started the late Yaradua, may so rest in peace, picked up, and then uh, President Goodluck, good luck, where, you know, Obasanjo was the one who set up this uh, Tema, uh, Tema plant, you know, all over, the, I think about uh, 10 or 13 of them. The essence was to use what we have to generate, to generate power. And the way it was rushed, there were mistakes. There are some of these power, uh, uh, power plants that were built without the gas infrastructure. And so you just have this. It is now that most of them are have being supplied with gas. Building now, pipelines now, the issue of distribution itself, distribution itself became a problem. Because, you see, we have the 330 uh, line. Lines, yeah. Now, there, there, there are gaps in the loop, in the looping of the 330 in such a manner that even if we produce electricity, it, it will not cover it, waste, it, it, yes. it will go to waste. Yeah. And that is what is happening because I, I heard the minister saying that, uh, uh, you know, about 3,000 of uh, electricity produced are stranded. Mm. Because the government needs, transmission is a security matter. It has to be addressed by government. Transmission line is not something that can be done by individuals. So government need to holistically, like you say, if my court, you sit down and look at how we can address the issue of electricity. It's not enough to privatize it. You privatize something, you give somebody something that can't work. It can't work. Whether it's in private hand or not, it can't work. It's built on fast sand, and so it will collapse. That is where we are. If we get electricity, even if we can just get about 10,000 megawatts of electricity in this country, this country will change, the economy will change. Because people but, will, but it won't be enough. No, it won't be enough, but because there will be an improvement. Be, it won't be enough it, because all those cottage industries that you're talking, you know, little businesses, they will tap into I it will tell too. you something. Um, I and the late President Yaradua uh, went to Brazil. And one of the issues we wanted to collaborate with the then, uh, uh, the then President Silva Dalula uh, who is having issues now, yeah, yeah. Uh, was on the issue of electricity. And to our amazement, the man says that at the time we were there, about 95% of Brazilians could assess electricity. 95% of Brazilians could assess electricity. If 95% of Nigerians will assess electricity here, this country would be a heaven. You know, we, we, we don't prioritize what we need to do. Electricity is at the core of, of the development of this country. If we have electricity, go to South Africa. You know, South Africa have moved they are, to they nuclear. Are they, are beginning, they, are, they are beginning to have problems now. No, but there are outages in South Africa. Yes, yeah. but it's the management. Mm. South Africa have moved to nuclear power supply. Yeah, by Tesco. It, 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 is, the, it is the management of it. Here, we can't even produce. They say that it's been privatized. Privatized what? privatize something that is empty, it can't work. And so what we need to do, and I, I want to encourage the president 
to look at the issue of electricity with more seriousness. I think we're hasty in the privatization that we did in the power sector because those things need, if, if, if we're giving somebody something for him to work with, you must give him something that is whole, isn't it? But, you know, a lot of issues in, like, for instance, like distribution. You said distribution has been privatized. Meanwhile, the transmission lines are not, are not complete. So, it's like putting once, uh, once, the if we want our horse. economy, if we want to change this economy, it's not even oil, it's electricity. That Nigerians who have the technology to produce anything, you know, there was a gentleman the other time, I'm, I'm sure you are aware, mm. who produced an aircraft. You know, so people need electricity to produce this. I went to South, South Korea when I was governor, and I went to a house who wanted to buy uh, a rice milling machine. It was husband and wife and children that are producing uh, a small rice. Miller. Yeah, no, big ones. Mm -hmm. The size you want in the house. I went right to that. The ambassador then took me in there. It's a family in their own home that are producing this. Because of what? There's electricity constant. And so once you get the people who have the technology, that solves the problem. Yeah. And we have Nigerians who have trained everywhere in the world. We have even some of them who are astronauts. So what but we why, need but why is did electricity. You, why did you go to China? You have uh, Nigerian uh, engineering institutions that can uh, fabricate your meals for you. No, you? We, we wanted to look at it. Okay. We wanted to look at it. And what we are talking here is not whether you, know, you travel to China or not. Mm. But we are saying that if we produce enough electricity, yeah. we can have families. Yeah producing this. I also uh, went to Vietnam. Uh, okay. And I went to their villages. You, knowing what Vietnam went through, mm. each village in the remotest of villages in Vietnam, those families have small, small cottage industries, as I said, yeah. with constant electricity. Yeah. If Vietnam, that went through what they went through, could attend that with all the resources we have here, why won't we be able to do that? Part of the problem, you, because we're discussing Zamfara, and you forgot something that is very important. Okay. The mining in Zamfara. Oh. With foreigners there. F those foreigners are a contributory factor to the banditry that is going on. You know mining. You know what mining did to Sierra Leone. Mm -hmm. You know what it did to Liberia. To so Liberia. Yeah. Even Congo. I'm happy that the president, I, I wanted that it should be disbanded, not just suspended, for some time. Because those foreigners have nothing to lose. That the not one, one of them uh, was okay, ever now because that the one funding that you know when they are producing gold and other very valuable uh, mineral, mineral resources, resources in that place, yeah. you know they are paying those people, they are buying arms for them. I think that those foreigners who have been mining there, some of them should be arrested and interrogated. And this, also money, this money is not come to the it doesn't government, come to government. Uh, government uh, coffers. So, so we have these resources that can be channeled properly. You know, uh, I, I'm sure that if this was a funding program, people would be asking, so in your position, what, what will you do? You know, there are these questions that people ask. Uh, but then it is for us to put ourselves together, quite frankly. And, and then Nigeria will be a better place. But electricity is at the core of it. Okay, Nigeria will be a better place. And the jostling again in the Ninth National Assembly is really hot enough. You're coming in there to the Senate. The North Central says they have the right to produce the President of the Senate, whether APC is in majority or not, you know, uh, because uh, it will only be fair to zone the positions appropriately. Is zoning helping the politics, you know, in this country, if you take yeah, the national Yeah, Assembly you see, there. zoning was introduced by uh, MPN, and the essence was to address uh, the, uh, the cry of marginalization at that time. And, and that is why they said it's okay. We have six geopolitical zones. Yeah. Let's give every zone a major position. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's also reflected in the Constitution. Federal character, character yeah. you know. So, but then it has been abused down the road. People, you know, you, just because uh, this position is zoned to a place, 
Uh, they don't look at the level of competence or merit. So you have a lot of mediocres who have ascended positions that ordinarily they wouldn't have been there. Mm. And you know what mediocrity does to a system. Mm. And so that is the problem. And so we have gone to a level where we should be looking at merit. You know, that's what you stand we, for. Yeah, we in, should in be the looking at merit. Choosing in, the leadership in, of in, the in national choosing assembly. the leadership of the national assembly yeah. and, and 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 avoid uh, subterranean forces coming in to decide what happened there. Because you know, if we look at the constitution again, uh, section fifty, so one A and B, clearly states that the members of the national assembly shall among themselves elect their own one of leaders. their own leaders. Yeah. It didn't talk even about uh, the political, the party political parties. Impose, uh, but, but you see, there are conventions. I have no problem that uh, APC, as the one that have preponderance of members there, should produce a leadership. Because conventions across the world where this is practiced have uh, support that. And so by convention, APC should produce the leadership. I have no problem with that. Nobody will have any problem with that. But then, is it proper? For the party to now not just say we are zoning this year and zone it to individuals, you know we ha we have people there who are ex this ex that ex that matured people. I think that is where the problem normally come. And if we look at the history since 1999, it has never worked. Mm -hmm. When we got in 1999, in the House of Reps, the then president had a candidate, and we Salusi simply Ibrahim. no, it wasn't Salusi Ibrahim. Mm. It was a different candidate. We decided on Salusi Ibrahim. Okay. Bwari. When we came by in 2003, it was the same thing. We decided to vote to bring in Masari. When Jonathan was the president, and the, it was zoned to the southwest, mm, and certain candidates were being peddled around, that was how Tambo and uh, now governor-elect of Imo emerged, because that was the, the consensus of members who were elected. Ditto for the, for, for the Senate when the then president wanted the warren but warren got it quite well but how long did it last six months the members wanted chuba or kadibo mm -hmm. and so i think parties or individuals who want to control what happened in national assembly should look at the history of it is it capable of tearing you know um, yeah it the, is it the, has the, the, the parliament it, it uh, has the potential apart. of doing that mm. uh, and so i believe that the president in his second term should be looking wants to leave a legacy he doesn't need this unnecessary distraction if we allow the members to select their own leaders, those leaders will work with the president without any problem. But once there is a feeling that of certain imposition. individuals, certain individuals, mm. wants to exercise powers that they don't have, people resist it. It's human nature. And so I think that the APC, why nobody is contesting that they will produce the leadership of the National Assembly? Should allow because it's a, bi it's a bipartisan issue. Issue, yeah. Because all the parties that are elected into that uh, national assembly are going to vote, so it's not just an APC affair. And so they should allow it. After all, those people who are contesting are highly qualified. You know, my friend has been there since 2007 when I left as governor. Uh, Ahmed Lawa, yeah, Ndume. Is also is has your, been is your friend too. Where, yes, from, where has, you, you, from, from, from reps, from reps to senate. <laughs> yeah. And of course, there's a third name that is coming up who has also been there for 12 years. So well, these are all qualified people, and they are all from the Northeast. So if they come, we we decide among who? us who uh, become uh, the presiding officer and the deputy presiding yes, officer. Yes, you forgot to mention Guji. <laughs> that is what I'm saying. Yeah. I said that is the third name that is coming yes, in. Yes. He has also been there. He's been governor. He's been minister. Yeah. He's been governor. Yeah. He's now well the third. He's now do, going in for the third time. And so he's well tested. These are all very highly qualified persons. And so there's no need for the party to try to skew this. When they skew it, even Nigerians are not happy about it because it means there is an agenda other than agenda that represents the hopes, you know, fears, and, and, and aspirations, aspirations of Nigerians. Of the it's, it's, it's not right. Yeah, thanks so very much, uh, Gabriel Suswan.
uh, who is a lawyer. Dr. Gabriel Sosa. Doctor, now. I have with, a PhD with in law. With a PhD. So is, he in the, is he in the kitty already? No, a PhD in law since 2012. Oh, fantastic. Please pardon me, you know. Uh, heads, heads like you shouldn't uh, be undermined in any way. <laughs> <laughs> so, Dr. Gabriel Suswan, former governor, two-time governor of Benue State, a former member House of Representatives and now Senator-elect of Benue State. Thanks so very much for being uh, part of uh, Transition 2019 and we we'll look forward again to invite you to subsequent uh, programs on the Arise News Channel. I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you very Thank much. You very much. Thank you. All right. Well, that's it for this edition of Transition 2019. Remember to join us again for a fresh edition tomorrow. From me and the entire team here in Abuja, this is Christian Ogodo saying goodbye and thanks for watching.